Oh, hello there. You know, a lot of people ask me, hey Andrew, what's the best headset out there? What's good that has a microphone? All right, who am I kidding? Nobody asked me that, but they should because I have the answer. It's the Odyssey Maxwell. And it's also so much more than that. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com and today we're talking all about the Odyssey Maxwell right here, which is an over-ear, closed-back, wireless, planar magnetic headset. Now, there are so many things to go over in this video, uh, so let's just get to it. For reference, this one costs $300. And in the world of gaming headsets, that may sound expensive, but as an audio product, I actually find this to be insanely aggressively priced. So yeah, all aboard the hype train on this one. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this was a demo unit sent over by Odyssey uh, for us to check out. As usual, I haven't been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. Now, I want to begin by going over what exactly this thing is, and also note that the Maxwell is somewhat packed with technology. And so there's really no way I'll be able to go over everything in this or cover every potential use case, uh, but I'm gonna do my best to cover as many as I can. So as mentioned, this is a wireless gaming headset with a detachable microphone. On the side of the cup, there's a button that is your mic mute. And then on the bottom, you've got some volume wheels as well as 3.5 input, USB-C input. But more importantly, the Maxwell also comes with a wireless dongle for low latency. And this is the optimal way to use this headphone in my opinion. This is most likely what you'll be using whether you're at your desk or you know at home sitting on the couch you know, with your console. While this is a wireless closed back headphone, it does not have active noise cancelling, so it's not competing with other ANC headphones like you would find with the Focal Patisse and stuff like that. One thing you do get though has to do with how others hear you with the microphone. Um, it's that Odyssey has included in this their filter technology, which is meant to help others hear you more clearly, even if you're in a busier environment. Now I'm obviously in a much quieter environment here, but I'll show you a, a sample of the, the mic test here in a little bit. Now when it comes to compatibility and the different versions, as stated by Odyssey's website, the Xbox version is the only one that comes with a Dolby Atmos license, while with the PlayStation version you get Tempest 3D. However, the way I understand this is that if you already have a Dolby Atmos license, it shouldn't matter. But if you're planning on just using this with PC, it might be worth considering which version you end up getting. Now, this headset has active digital signal processing going on. And so that 3.5 millimeter input that I showed you is for convenience only. And so let me get this out of the way and say that if you are looking for some particular synergy with the rest of your equipment, like say you have you know all kinds of amps and DACs and all kinds of stuff like that, that's not what this headphone is for. This headphone is meant to be used wirelessly, either through Bluetooth or with you know, the dongle here. Uh, and or you know through you know if you want to use USB-C you can uh, the 3.5 millimeter is there for convenience and this is always active just keep that in mind now as far as usability is concerned there's a few things to know when you first get this headphone you'll want to download the Odyssey HQ app and what you're going to want to do is update the firmware uh, you can actually download the app on your phone but I, I did this on the on PC you'll need to update the firmware for both the headset and the dongle now this was a really simple process and Odyssey HQ guides you through it but make sure you do this uh, because they've made a bunch of key improvements with this headset through firmware updates including to do with the sound quality so for the best overall experience make sure you update the firmware uh, as soon as you get this headphone if you end up getting it. And for PC users, there is one other thing that I encountered that I think is worth mentioning. If you're using the USB dongle, this is type C with a USB dongle, you want to ensure that the dongle is on its own dedicated USB controller so that it's the only thing on that USB controller because you may run into some issues if there's a whole bunch of different USB devices on that same controller. And you may run into issues regardless depending on the motherboard that you have. In my case, I actually encountered a, a kind of weird roboting out sound. It was actually being affected by the PCIe bandwidth. Uh, and that was a whole thing that I had to deal with. And this is not so much to do with the headset itself. It's just to do with what happens when you saturate the USB bus. Even with other audio devices, this can cause problems. And so I recommend for this one, uh, make sure that it's on its own. Okay, now let's get to the headset itself and talk a little bit about the build, design and comfort and all of that stuff. 
Right away, you can tell this is an extremely well-built product with sturdy feeling materials. It looks sleek, classy, and most important for me, not gaudy like the overwhelming majority of gaming products do these days. So there's no pointless RGB distractions or esoteric design flair or quirks that are intended to catch your eye only to give away to lackluster performance or lackluster experiences in the long run. And really, this whole industrial design speaks to the idea of taking a professional step up in terms of the hardware that you're using compared to what you may have used in the past or what others may be using, right? That's kind of the vibe that I get from this. It is a far more grown up looking device compared to many alternatives and I appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons why I think the Maxwell is also an exceptionally good office headphone or just regular day-to-day -day wireless headphone. Now, mechanically, the Maxwell has all the necessary pivot points uh, to make it ergonomically good. So. It has the cup swivel that you might want. You don't have, the arms don't extend or anything like that, but you do have an adjustment system underneath the leather strap right here. And then the ear pads are quite large. They're very soft and very cushiony, uh, but then also the opening for the ear pads is quite large as well. Uh, so you should, be, you should be able to fit your ears in no problem. When it comes to overall comfort, I find it to be good, um, but it's definitely also a bit heavy. Uh, it weighs about 500 grams. So keep in mind that planar drivers are regularly much larger structures than what you'd find in just about any other gaming headsets, you know, apart from the other ones that are also made by Odyssey. And just for comparison, this is what a typical dynamic driver looks like, uh, like something that you might find in, you know, common headsets. Actually, I believe this is even on the large side for that. Whereas this is what a planar magnetic driver looks like. Obviously, it's not the one that's in here, and this is probably larger than the one that's in here, but you get the idea. These structures are physically a lot larger. And so because of that, you have to contend with a lot more weight in the headphones. In any case, for those used to lighter gaming headsets, the extra weight may be a bit of a deal breaker. Like if you're trying to be hyper competitive in a particular game, the last thing you want is to be fatigued due to a heavy headphone. And I know what that's like. I've been there multiple times over the years, having had to swap to worse, lesser headphones just because I couldn't handle the weight of my good ones. It's actually one of the reasons why I sold my original Hi-Fi Man HE500 all those years ago. I loved the way that that headphone sounded, but it weighed over 500 grams, and I found myself regularly going to a you know worse headphone just because that headphone happened to be lighter and more comfortable, and for those competitive sessions, that was more important at the time. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. But with that said, the headphone itself, like the way that it fits on my head, uh, the weight distribution and everything to do with, you know, the way it, it just sort of couples and sits there. It's actually really good for the comfort. And so, you know, unless you're on the super competitive end of things, uh, I think you'll probably be okay with this. Otherwise, you might be better suited by something lighter. For battery life, it's rated for 80 hours, but of course, real world usage is bound to vary. In my case, I found it to be actually super impressive. Like, I rarely ever had to charge this, and I was not careful about turning it off to preserve the battery or anything like that. And then what I found when I did charge this, it charged super fast. Just 20 minutes of charging, and I could get through the rest of the day, no problem. Like, it was actually kind of crazy. So that's definitely something that Odyssey's done a fantastic job with here on the Maxwell. Okay, let's quickly talk about the microphone here and see how that sounds. And just so you guys can get a sense of that, let me switch over to it. Okay, this is what the Odyssey Maxwell microphone sounds like. In my opinion, this is not a particularly great sounding microphone. I've certainly heard better microphones on other headsets in the past, like for example, the Sennheiser PC38X, I believe has a better sounding microphone than this one. And certainly this is not better than any dedicated microphone that you might have uh, if you have like a dedicated headphone microphone setup. However, I do think it's good enough to get the job done here, especially if it's just for communication during games. And speaking of which, the Maxwell also has a number of interesting features when it comes to the microphone. The first is that it has side tone, and this is something you can actually toggle it with the buttons or you can customize it with the Odyssey HQ app depending on how much you want. Um, and what it does is it makes it so that if, you, if you're in a shared space and you need to hear what's going on in your space, you turn on side tone and then it's going to pump that sound into into your headphones. Now what I found with this feature is that when you turn it on it does have this sort of parasitic kind of burble or noise that comes through and I didn't find that to be particularly enjoyable so I don't think this is a feature that I would use that often but I do know that there are lots of people who want to hear their ambient environment or even hear themselves when they're speaking so I can definitely see a use case for it but the other standout feature here is amazing. It's Odyssey's filter technology, and it does essentially what you imagine it would. It filters out all of the ambient sound in your environment, 
so that when you're speaking, people will just hear you and not whatever else is going on around you, like, you know, people riding motorcycles nearby or whatever, whatever you're doing. Okay, so I have noise suppression off right now. I'm going to play some pink noise. And just so you know, the, the pink noise that I'm playing here is louder than I would ever play anything from those speakers ever. Uh, so it is deafening in here when I have this playing. Um, and what you'll hear is that when I turn noise suppression on, that sound completely goes away. Now, the, the consequence here is that the quality of the microphone, like the, the, the sound quality, degrades a little bit. But I find this technology to be super impressive, so let's check it out. Alright, so you can hear the ambient noise in the background, the pink noise that I'm playing through the speakers here. You can tell that the microphone is already doing a pretty good job of noise rejection. So you can hear my voice coming through, despite the fact that, that there's pink noise blasting through the speakers here. But now watch what happens when I turn noise suppression on. So this is with noise suppression on low, and I think even with it on low, all of that sound is basically gone. So you probably don't even need to turn noise suppression on high, um, unless you're like, yeah, working in like a motorcycle repair shop or something, I don't know. So I would probably just leave it on noise suppression low if you are in a busy environment. Uh, but let me just show you what it sounds like with noise suppression high. I don't think there will even be much of a difference. Right now it's on noise suppression high, and uh, yeah, this is basically what it sounds like. You guys, let me know how it did. Uh, but I've I've been super impressed with this technology. Uh, I'm just going to run one more test here. This is something that uh, people people do. Uh, I'm going to take a bag and I'm going to crinkle it in front of the microphone. Keep in mind this is with noise suppression on high. So let me just stop speaking here for a second. P people do this, right? This is a, this is a common thing. Anyways, that basically does it for the microphone test. While the quality of the microphone isn't the greatest, I am super impressed with this filter technology and I look forward to seeing it in more stuff in the future. Okay, now let's talk about sound quality and I'm gonna be going over both sound for music and for gaming. Let's start by talking about how this is for music. Now, for some of you who might be familiar with Odyssey's more traditional high-end headphones, the story tends to be that they have great subjective technical performance, but for their tuning, they often leave something to be desired. And this is also why many of us love using Odyssey headphones to get into EQ, especially since many of them have ultra low distortion and can take quite a lot of it. Like if you wanna do crazy bass boost stuff with EQ, Odyssey is generally a good bet there. But with the Maxwell, that story changes. I can confidently say that the Maxwell is Odyssey's best tuned headphone, period. And not just that, it is a strong claim to being one of the very best tuned closed back headphones on the market available today. At the very least, it is certainly one of the best. Like if you compare the way this sounds to many high-end wired headphones, the tonal balance on the Odyssey Maxwell is simply better. And of course, this is thanks to the use of digital signal processing. So they've essentially done the EQ adjustments for you here. And this is one of the reasons why I'm kind of blown away that this exists at the $300 price mark. Like I think it's a little bit shocking or we should think of it as a little bit shocking. I'm shocked. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's go through the measurements. Taking a look at the Maxwell's frequency response done here on the BNK5128, you can see that this is essentially neutral with the bass boost. That's kind of the sound signature that the Maxwell ends up going for with the default Odyssey preset. And there are a whole bunch of different presets and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but for the default one, uh, that's basically what you get, neutral-ish with a bass boost. And for those who are new to headphone measurements, for raw graphs, no headphone should measure flat, but for compensated graphs, you may want them to measure flat. That is, of course, depending on the target being used. In this case, we're using an 8 dB slope that's been demonstrated to be preferred by most listeners in both headphones and speakers. But for those who are familiar with headphone measurements, the Maxwell with the Odyssey default preset ends up being mostly close to the 2018 Harman over-ear headphone target. It's maybe a little bit relaxed there in the mid-treble by comparison, but for anyone looking for a balanced, well-tuned headphone that's going to sound great to most people, this is it. And to describe the kind of sound you get with a tuning like this, in a word, clarity. If again, you're coming from more traditional gaming headsets, if that's what you're used to, and you've never heard anything that is tuned kind of like this, you'll notice right away that 
everything is so much more clear. You'll notice things in the mix that you may not have noticed before, and certain elements in the mix come forward a little bit and are again presented in a more clear manner. This is in part due to the strong presence at around three kilohertz, otherwise known as the strongest part of the ear gain. And for more information on that, if you're curious to learn more about this, check out some of the links in the description where we talk a little bit about how to read headphone measurements and kind of what all of this stuff means. I do think there are still a couple of quirks here and there, like really small quirks. Like I think I prefer about 2 dB less energy at 3K and maybe a touch less bass or having the bass be a little bit more sub bass focused. That upper mid range borders just ever so slightly on shout to my ear, but it's not nearly as much glare to that region as what I found with uh, some of Odyssey's other recent releases, again, like the MM500 and the LCD-5. These are very minor things. These are things that I'm gonna quibble about, but for a headphone like this, like the Maxwell here at $300, Damn, is it ever good. So with this headphone, I don't ever feel the need to EQ it, even though I would still personally probably dial it in ever so slightly just to suit my preferences there. You know, what can I say? I'm a picky boy. But regardless, what they've achieved here when it comes to, you know, satisfying the majority of listeners, this is one of the best results you can get. And here's where things get interesting, because that's just with the default Odyssey preset. Odyssey also gives you a number of additional presets in the Odyssey HQ app. Uh, you get a treble boost, a bass boost, you get immersive, which is essentially bass and treble. Uh, you then also get a competitive preset and then you get a footsteps preset. Now on the mobile app, you also have the ability to dial in custom EQ settings. Currently, it's a bit primitive and I'd like to see a full parametric EQ going on. Uh, and if you're using this on PC, this feature currently as of recording this, it doesn't exist. I expect it will. Uh, and I'm probably still going to recommend using Equalizer APO with a PCUI or even just Equalizer APO on its own for those really wanting to dial it in. But it is so nice that with the Maxwell, for the most part, you don't have to. Now, let's talk about the subjective stuff, the audiophile interpretation of how this headphone sounds. And here, the Maxwell is on the good end of what I think we should expect at this price point. At least good at the things you'd expect a planar magnetic headphone, a, co a closed back planar magnetic headphone to be good at. So it sounds controlled during busy passages in music. You can hear instruments well separated and distinct from one another. Uh, it's nothing amazing in that regard, but certainly better than just about every other headset out there ever. <laughs> and if you're approaching this from the wired audiophile side of things, uh, this isn't going to blow you away with any sort of sheer resolution and detail that you might find with Odyssey's, you know, full-sized wired headphones. Uh, but it is certainly so much better than what you get with something like the Drop Panda. And I'm actually going to say that it's better than what you get on the Aeon X Closed for being able to hear the small gradations of volume. That's another wired headphone, planar magnetic headphone, that I've been up until now kind of recommending as one of the best ones out there, you know, for the money. And now I think that the Maxwell kind of supplants that for me. Um, this is, you know, equally well-tuned, slightly different, but equally well-tuned. And I think for the, the sort of subjective performance, it, it's at least as good. Now, where the Maxwell unsurprisingly doesn't shine, is in that sense of dynamics and contrast or punch or physicality. That's not something that planers often do that well with, and the Maxwell here isn't really any exception. Now, when it comes to soundstage and that sense of spaciousness, this is where things I think are gonna be a little bit controversial. I hear the Maxwell as being a little bit more on the intimate side of things. And I think this is a consequence of having that tuning filled in in the mids, as opposed to headphones that sometimes have a dip there right at around like 1.5K. It's much more filled in on the Maxwell. So anywhere between one and 3K basically. Again, with music, this means that vocals are pulled a little bit forward in the mix, uh, but also as a consequence, the soundstage is a little bit more towards you generally as well. Now for competitive situations, we actually had a lot of fun. I did some blindfolded testing with Chrono and DMS to see how the Maxwell did. And you remember that extra clarity that I mentioned? Well, this translates to games as well, but I found that both the footsteps and competition presets were actually useful. The footsteps preset boosts 100 Hertz as well as the upper mids around 3K to enhance those tones. And while I'd never used this for music, like it sounds really weird for music, I did find this to be effective in games, making footsteps come through louder and cut through the rest of what was going on in the game. For competition, it mainly just reduces the bass boost. So important directional sound cues aren't drowned out by boomier sounds going on. It's important to note that the Maxwell does not have the usual 5.1 surround sound, but 
I've also found that a lot of the time it comes down to what the player is used to. So for me, not being a 5.1 surround sound type of person generally, you know, not having that feature wasn't an issue and it felt super normal to use the Maxwell. But for people who are used to using 5.1 or simulated surround sound setups, that might actually be more important. With more immersive games, I enjoyed both the immersive and default Odyssey presets. And for games with good audio, the Maxwell is like crazy good <laughs> um, in either of those modes. Immersive gives you basically an extra rumble and kind of crispness. So you can imagine, you know, the way this helps enhance the sound of explosions and that kind of thing. It makes them sound more powerful. Kind of what you expect from a more V-shaped sound signature. But I also often find that headphones with an even tonal balance, the way the Maxwell has, they tend to do well in games regardless. And so the Maxwell is no exception to that. The one consideration, again, for competitive situations is that it's a bit heavier than other headsets, and it's worth keeping that in mind. So I briefly also wanted to mention how the Maxwell compares to some of Odyssey's other gaming headsets, because they've been doing this for a while now uh, with the Mobius and the Penrose, and some of you guys also may know the one from HyperX, which is essentially a rebranded version of one of those. And the Maxwell is kind of like the magnum opus platform of that idea. While the Maxwell isn't categorically different in its concept, it's certainly better in its execution in just about every way. With a better tuning, fewer issues or quirks like some of the background hiss that I think the Penrose had. And I say platform here because I really think that there's more to this idea than just a gaming headset. You know, as I mentioned throughout this review, this is something that I expect is going to really appeal to music lovers and people who want to get, you know, as much as they can out of their music and make it sound as good as they possibly can. I think this is actually going to do great for, you know, folks like that as well, not just gamers. And I know there are many of us who do both. That's how a lot of audiophiles get into this hobby. You know, we often start out spending a lot of time at our desks playing games and wanting to have a great headphone experience as part of that. Uh, as part of that activity. And I definitely wish that the Maxwell had been around when I was first taking that step, you know, to level up my gaming audio setup or my headphone setup while, you know, playing games, because this is exactly what I would have wanted back then. Um, instead, I went on a, you know, crazy journey to become a headphone reviewer. And, you know, that's terrible. But you get the idea. Like, this is something that, like, as someone who just wants to spend time listening to amazing headphones while they're at their desk, whether it be gaming or doing anything else, the Maxwell is outstanding for that. Beyond that, the Maxwell is also fantastic just as a wireless Bluetooth headphone. You take the mic off and it becomes this portable audio experience that's so much better than anything else that's kind of like this. Like, sure, it doesn't have you know active noise cancelling like you'd find on Bose or Sony or Apple products, but the sound quality here is on an entirely different level, like completely different. Um, it's not even remotely close. And I found that the passive noise isolation is also really good as well. Like I've been regularly yelled at for, you know, not hearing what else is going on that I should be hearing, or should be paying attention to because the passive isolation is so good. So to conclude, yes, the Odyssey Maxwell is going to get a strong recommendation from me. As long as you're okay with a heavier headset, that is, I think, the key thing to focus on with this one. Uh, because the sound quality and the integration and everything else about it is just extremely well done. If you're able to handle a heavier headset, then this is one of the strongest recommendations I can give for this type of thing. And I expect that it'll get a strong recommendation from just about everyone. Like this thing is way too good for the price. And actually, if anybody doesn't know me or what we do here with this channel, I do not say these things lightly. Like this kind of praise is extremely rare, as it should be. And while I think it still has to make some compromises in one area or another, like the weight, like I mentioned, they're also smartly minimized in favor of the things that are going to matter the most. So in my opinion, the Maxwell is knocking on the door of being a truly great generational product. I haven't been able to say that about really anything in the last, well, in a very long time. <laughs> so yeah, this thing, it's, it's just outstanding. A great job, Odyssey. Anyways, that's going to do it for me in this video. If you guys want to see additional data, as I mentioned, uh, that'll be linked in the description to a forum thread. Make sure you guys check out the audio files up on headphones.com. That's where we do all of our written articles and headphone reviews, audio reviews for all kinds of different things. And join us on Discord, also linked below. That's where you can connect with me and other like-minded audio folks. And that does it for me. I'll see you guys next time.